Okay, it's time for a current movie review, which hasn't happened in... It's been a hot minute. Checks wrist many months. <laughs> Scribbles watch on wrist in permanent ink. God, what was the last current movie that we even reviewed? Scoob. It was Scoob? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because it was Trolls. It was Onward, Trolls, and then Scoob. Uh-huh. And here we are. We're doing a double review. Yep. Because we watched two movies that didn't get released to theaters or had limited and then digital releases. Yeah. And God, I don't know what that means for current movie reviews going forward. Like, it's going to be up in the air whether we watch things or not. I don't know. It, I'll just tell y'all right now, if I have to pay like 30 bucks to stream a new movie and I don't even get to go to a theater and get popcorn as part of that ticket price. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Especially <laughs> so. if it's going to be something that I really don't want to see and is probably going to be bad. Like The Croods too. We're not watching it. Yeah, well, I think... You know, for the foreseeable future, current movie reviews are probably just going to be more so films that we decided to watch, we liked, and we liked or didn't like, but we have feelings about it and we actually want to talk about it. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go about it, because mm -hmm. Animation Pilgrimage is where we're spending most of our time watching films anyway, so if you want a more in-depth look on many films, as in literally every movie we can get our hands on mm -hmm. in chronological order... Go watch that. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about Soul yeah. and Wolf Walkers. So we're going to start off by talking with Soul, and we're going to talk about the non-spoiler section. So mm -hmm. if you... you haven't seen either of these movies, now's a good time to go watch them. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about Soul first, and then we're going to talk about spoilers for Soul and how we feel about that. And then and we're going to talk about Wolf Walker, Walkers, non-spoilers, and then spoilers. Yeah. And then if we have any final thoughts that correlate between the two films together, we'll try to try to keep it at the end together but who knows yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you want to skip the soul section you can go here to jump right to the wolf walkers yeah anyway sean how do you feel about soul i feel like soul is fine mm -hmm. i'm not I, i'm lukewarm honestly on most of the plot but a lot of the visual and musical aesthetics mm -hmm. are beautifully gorgeous and music to my ears, quite literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I the will sad say, thing is, and I think I can about... speak for both of us here, mm -hmm. I feel like Soul didn't really do anything for us emotionally. And that's really the bread and butter of this film. That's the part that I've been hearing everybody talk about that, you know, was the standout part for them. And I feel like emotionally this fell really flat. Yeah, I I don't feel like the the core of the movie that they're going for finished. Yeah. Like it it did it it did everything it wanted to do and I'm left sitting there with is that really all you're doing? Mm -hmm. You could have wrapped this up better or like said a little bit more. But no, that's the theme you're going with, just that. All right. Okay. Fine. There's also a section in the middle that Again, I don't I watch really trailers. I really don't like. Uh, yeah, I don't watch trailers, so I don't know if it's been talked about, but there's a section in the middle that I was not really expecting, but also something along those lines. I think that's pretty heavy lines. spoilers. The, the trailers definitely lead you to believe one thing, and that thing happens, that thing being that, you know, like, Joe, our main character, dies... And then he becomes like this little blob soul thingy. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, oh no, he's going to spend the whole movie as this little blob thingy. We'll talk more about that in the spoiler Something section. happens. And we'll talk more about it in the spoiler section. Yeah, exactly. More non-spoiler things. <sighs> this is a movie about jazz music. Not really. Okay. It's pretending to be a movie about jazz music. Not really. It's a movie that has jazz music in it. Okay, I wanted more jazz music. Yeah. That being said, the ambiance and music that they do use for the not reality mm -hmm. is really good. There's some real fucking good uh, synth and electronic music. And that, and is, that is right up your alley. absolutely my jam. It's just mm -hmm. not what I expected to get out of a movie that I thought was going to be about jazz music, which I also enjoy. Yeah. 
yeah, I really enjoy both of these music um, stylings. Yeah. So. And they don't mix them. They could have easily done something to <gasps> mix those two styles, and they didn't even try. Electric jazz would have been. Ooh. Mm hmm. Love it. But yeah. Uh, beautiful soundtrack. There's a couple of scenes in this movie I love, but like the whole second and third act, I'm just kind of really lukewarm about. Mm -hmm. And even parts of the first act, there's really just like specific scenes that I really like. But other than that, I'm just kind of eh about the rest of it. Yeah. Um, another thing that I want to say about this film that I don't think goes into spoilers is that I think this movie, with the message it went with, released at a really good time. I don't know if it was, if it weren't for the fact that we were living in the times we are living in, that this message would have hit as well. Hit as well for so many people. But that being said, I don't necessarily think that. Um, the exact scenario that they set up with this message is the correct message they should have gone with. No, that's not what I was going to say at all. Oh, okay. Let me finish my sentence. Go ahead. I don't think that with more time and, like, the more time this movie has to sit and, like, ruminate in the back of people's heads, like, I don't think this is going to age particularly well. Okay, yes. Because this is a film that, like, sits in the back of your mind after you see it. If you say so. I honestly stopped thinking about it maybe a day or two after we watched it. Okay. Because, I don't know, we watched it the day it came out, and then, obviously, it's been weeks <laughs> since then. <laughs> yeah. Which felt like years. Yeah. For other reasons. Uh, yeah. Pretty right. much. Uh, I think that's... A good place for us to switch over into spoilers. Yeah, so overall, we're kind of lukewarm. We're mm -hmm. going to now talk about spoilers, which means talking about specific characters and ideas and themes that were throughout the entire film. So if this is something you don't want, go watch the movie on Disney Plus or just skip to this timestamp again for the Wolf Walker section. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler section. So. In the, like, 20, 30-minute mark of this movie, whenever we start Act 2, mm -hmm. Joe and 22, which is the other blobby soul character played by Tina Fey, uh, end up falling Earth. back into Earth. <sighs> and Joe becomes a cat. And Joe... And 22 is in Joe's body. Yeah. Joe is our main character. This cat is ugly as sin. <laughs> yeah, okay, first things first. The cat is ugly as sin, and I hate that so many 3D animated cats look like this. Oh, the other day I actually thought of a cat that doesn't follow this art aesthetic mm -hmm. and is good. I mean, there's several. There's Puss several. in Boots from yeah. Shrek. Like, actually decides to go with the more realistic approach, and it works well. Mm -hmm. But, like, this feels like a cat out of Secret Life of Pets. And that's not something you should emulate because I do not like the style of those movies. Well, it's obvious that they were trying to make the cat character design wise look visually similar to Joe. And like they give him a lot of, they gave the cat a lot of the same um, like shapes. But it just looks so bad on a cat, but like... The face is way too big. Also, I've seen this cat a million times before. I just, I don't, I don't like the cat. I mm. don't like that there's this body swapping thing going on. I <sighs> don't like the fact that the movie addresses... They want to keep um, 22's character ambiguously gendered, but then almost immediately... They have Tina Fey make a joke about how she sounds like an annoying middle-aged white woman. And I'm like, Ugh. could but you could have just you not put just that joke in there. Left 22 as ambiguous non-binary they. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and then it just made it very distracting that like, yes, a lady is now in 
Joe's body and I, I don't I don't like it and they spend most of the movie like this. So Joe not only spends most of the movie not in his own body as but, a blob, but not in his own body as a cat. And that was an issue a lot of people were going to have coming into this movie because it stars a black man mm -hmm. and he spends most of the movie not as himself. Yeah. Which is incredibly frustrating. Yeah, because this kind of thing happens all the time, and mm -hmm. we're sick of seeing it. You know, that I, honestly, that's an aspect that I hadn't even really thought about. Mm hmm But, yeah, a female character, a female-coded character being stuck inside the body of a male-coded character... Is not great. <laughs> not great. I, I will admit, it... It didn't make me feel great. Just, yeah. yeah. Understandable. Understandable. Um, speaking of 22, 22 is actually kind of the main... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Joe, Joe and, 22 and 22 are, are both. both main characters. But when the second act hits, it really takes a pivot into being a story about 22. So much to the point that Joe kind of becomes the bad guy. Yeah, he's just an asshole. Yeah. Um, Joe, unfortunately, spends a good chunk of the movie being way too single-minded for... This one thing that he wants. Yeah, and Which it makes sure him is. really hard to relate to. And this is coming from somebody who has felt the... The, the, the whole thing with Joe is, like, he's so driven to live out his dreams as a jazz piano player and to get this gig that he's kind of lost sight of everything else. And, like, I so get that. If there is a movie Pixar could have directed straight at me, like, this, this, this message is, is for me. But, like, Joe is so cartoonishly single-minded about this. That, like, I can't relate to him at all. Mm -hmm. And then, so, you're supposed to be relating to 22 and how 22 is going through all of this. Because the whole deal with 22 is that they've never... Felt the inspiration to be alive. Yeah, they're so just not interested. Born. They're just not interested in life. So, they stay behind in, like, the world of souls... And never get born. Yeah, and never get born. But then it's when they fall into Joe's life and they are actually living life that they learn that they do want to live. The problem with that, though, is like, I again, I just did not... Feel connected to this character. No, like, all of 22's little revelations, while nice moments on their own, don't really feel like they build in a way that, like brings me along on the journey. I don't know exactly what it is about this that just doesn't connect with me, but it just feels really flat. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. Body swapping is not really a plot point that usually lands very well, yeah. ever. <laughs> there are small instances here and there where it works, and honestly, I think generally it's going to be something that works better in a shorter format, as as short a format as possible. Mm -hmm. So like a single television episode, you could do some fun stuff with that. But like when you start getting it into like an entire movie, then... It, Especially a movie that wants to hit as deep as this one does. Body swapping is not a way to be deep, man. Yeah, it's... It's so goofy and uncomfortable of a premise that if you take it too seriously, it's just so uncomfortable. But if you take it as just a joke, it's not really substantial enough to, like, last that long. Hmm. This It honestly made me think, after watching the movie, I was like, is it possible to make a body-swapping movie where the plot isn't, I have to get my old body back, but instead you know what, this new body is actually everything that I ever wanted, and they just stay swapped. Mm -hmm. Is there some way to make that feel correct? That, that just feels so... Well, because that's kind of a plot point in this movie, is 22 starts to run away from Joe because she wants 
that they want to continue living mm -hmm. and they don't want to go back to the soulless place. Yeah, I to... guess maybe not body swapping, but like transformation. Yeah. Really like just a general transformation. I don't know. I don't We're know. not here this brainstorming. Yeah, it's way out there, but like it's something that like rattled around my head and I didn't think about a whole lot and I just remembered it now. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring it up. Brainstorm in the comments, I guess. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so after all is said and done, the, the, the theme of this movie is that you know, just be happy living. Oh, well, you wait, stop interrupting. The whole <laughs> theme of this movie is that, like, you know, your passions are great and all, but they aren't your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. They aren't the thing, they aren't, you know, so important that that's the only thing that's going to make you happy. You need to learn to, you know, that's not the reason you're alive. You're alive because you're alive and you should just enjoy being Living. alive. Yeah. Enjoy the little things. And I mean, that's, that's the basics of it. However, <laughs> this, this is where I get a little nitpicky into the, into the themes of this. Um, I feel like the movie does a really good job setting up its theme with a lot of the side characters, but then it fails in completing that arc with our main character, Joe. Yeah. And I want to explain why I feel like that. Okay. So, uh, one of the first instances we see of this theme, like, coming together is when 22 and Joe go to the barber to get Joe's hairs fixed before the gig. And this barber ends up kind of giving his life story about how he thought um, growing up that he was going to be- A veterinarian, I think? I, I think that's what it was, a vet. Um, and then it turned out to not work. He got a job as a barber and he's happy and he's content with his life. Mm -hmm. And like, that's a really good scene. Like, I really liked that character. I really liked how it presented all that information and just, like, it, it just had a very natural conclusion. It's like, and like I it's, thought it's I was going to do one thing, but I ended up doing this other thing, and you know what? I'm I happy. enjoy it. Right, and, like, that's like that's it. That's the lesson Joe needs to learn. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we get another... These aren't as big of moments, but they're they're moments that still like they're they're hitting the theme. They're these moments where they're straight um, up telling you what the theme yeah, is. Yeah, they're straight up of. telling you, you know, like this is what you need to be getting from the movie. Where uh, one Joe of the caretakers, yeah, one of the caretakers. I think they're all named Jerry. Yeah. Um, Joe says something along the lines of like, "Oh, you know." But what was the thing? What what was, you know... What made it work for 22? Well, no, no, no. Like, Joe says something along the lines of, like, if I'm not doing m what my spark was... Like, he, he equates to the spark of living as... Your purpose. As your purpose in life. The because, one thing that you're supposed to be good at or enjoy or whatever. Well, the one thing you're supposed to do with your life. Yes. So... In this soul world, all the souls need to find their their spark of, like, this thing they enjoy. And then that lets them go down to Earth. And Joe's like, oh, well, I'm so glad they found their purpose. And then this Jerry caretaker says something along the lines of, like, your spark doesn't determine your purpose. Oh, you silly humans thinking you know everything or something like that. Like, it's literally just telling you what the movie's about. It's like... The spark isn't your purpose in life. The spark just want, gets you engaged in wanting to live. Mm hmm Period. That's it. Yeah. It's just a part of living. Mm-hmm. And then, last but not least, to kind of drive all of this home, um, Joe ends up getting the gig. He does it, and he's playing with, you know, this, uh, this musician at this jazz parlor. He's always wanted to do this, and... You know, it's with Dorothea Williams and, you know, she's like this real hard ass and like 
top of her game, da 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 da. He does it and then he reflects on it and he goes like, I feel empty. Like He doesn't I say thought, that exactly, but he's like, is I, this it? Right. Like I thought this was going to bring me more happiness than it did. Like I thought I would feel it feel like fulfilled in life now. And then Dorothea says something along the lines of like Don't know what to tell you, bud. You come back, you do it every night. And you keep going. Right. She, I mean, she essentially... I can't remember the exact wording, but she just... Of course, she just says, like, your life doesn't end just because, like, you did the thing. Like, mm-hmm. this isn't the only thing you need to do to be happy. Like, just because you're doing the thing you like doesn't mean you're going to be happy. Like, mm-hmm. it's just very straightforward and very much kind of a, a final slap in the face to, to Joe to, like, wake up and smell the roses. Um, and like all three of these scenes are great and they get the point across. But then when we get to Joe at the end, I feel like it doesn't get to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. It ends with Joe resolving to just not sure what he's going to do with his life, but he's going to live it. He's going to live it all. Right. And then the and movie, then the movie kind of, yeah, and then the movie ends and it just kind of says like, well, it doesn't matter how it's resolved because he's going to live his life now. And I'm like, but it does matter what he does next because we don't have closure yet. Like there's these scenes where we have the, um, with Joe teaching the students mm-hmm. and there's the scene where the student comes by his office And she's like, I'm going to quit music because people keep on making fun of me. And then 22 in Joe's body ends up talking to the student and they end up having this like heart to heart where the student realizes they don't want to quit. They're really passionate about it. Just they're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I just don't feel like that goes anywhere significant after that point. (laughs) It's just like a random hit. And then no payoff later. It's not random. It's purposeful. Oh, but, yeah. like, it doesn't finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're going for. It makes me frustrated. I also don't love the fact that I love this this moral it has. But I also just don't feel like it's enough. You yeah. know, it's it's really not that unheard of for an animated film or cartoon or anything to tell you like, hey kids, stop being so self-centered and stop and smell the flowers. Cause like that, that's it. That's the moral. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And like that's said all the time. Man, it is sure great. Your random average life, isn't it? Don't need to worry about trying to become higher or better. Well, see, and then there's my other big problem. Mm -hmm. It's that I don't love that, like... The first time we get an African-American main character... In a Pixar movie, they decided to go with, you know, stop worrying about your dreams so much and just just... be satisfied with life. Like, come on, man. It's no... Can we do more, please? I think we're directing this at the wrong audience. Yeah. Like, at the wrong demographic of people to tell them to, like, hey, maybe stop reaching for your dreams so hard and smell the flowers. Yeah. Okay. Pixar, come on. Yeah. Did you not think about that? Who knows if they Again, like, I want to reiterate, I don't think... That, you know, any of this is really done maliciously. It's just TV yeah. tropes that all lined up to be... Unfortunate side effects. Yeah. And just, you know, somebody should have taken them to the side and gone like, Hey, maybe... No? <laughs> maybe you choose a different moral that you want to go for with this story. Yeah. Or if you're going to do the story, maybe have a different cast. Like... Mm-hmm. I don't know. I never like body swapping either, so. Uh, Some highlights, some good things. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some other good things. Yeah. I'm generally not a fan of caricature stylization 
which is what they go with, like, with all the humans in this movie. Mm -hmm. Which is something they've done since, like, Incredibles with, like, Brad Bird. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I, I don't think it's bad here. Some of the character designs are really good. Mm -hmm. It definitely makes the human cast look very unique and inspired and enjoyable to look at. I love the design for Dorothea Williams and Joe's mom. Yes, hell yeah. And the barber. Like, mm -hmm. I, I really liked the barber character. I don't remember his name, but I really liked the barber character. I mean, he's in one scene. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what his name is. He's great. I also love the designs and animation and the jokes done with um, the, the... caretakers? The caretakers, the Jerry's and, and Terry. Terry. Oh yeah. my god. They obviously came up with a concept art designer like, can we make that animated? Mm -hmm. And then they did it, and it's fantastic. I also know that this uh, movie for the, the soul world and getting like the, the particular like lighting on the little soul blobby things is like super insane. In depth and like rendered crazily and like Yeah, there's like a million different lighting things going on, which you know, I appreciate. I don't know what's going on there, but I appreciate. I still am the, the, the blobs the soul, are boring still. The soul blobs are so boring. And I really did not care for the whole scene of like all the unborn souls. Like that whole place is like so bland. Mm -hmm. It's like, honestly, don't care about any of this. I only like the overseers and the music. Yeah. The music is great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. The, the transition between... Going to the great beyond and the the unborn soul place was great. Where it got oh, all like weird oh, and dark and geometric and stuff. And yeah. then like this fantastic synth music just comes in. And I'm just like, oh yeah. god, I could listen to like this section on loop. Just give me more for of this. Hours. And then we're into like the newborn place. And I'm just like, it's okay. And then there's the whole um the, the void place. Oh, where like people get lost in like too much focus or silly things like that. <laughs> I I plot, don't really know what they were going with for plot going device. With that. The place, the location. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I I liked the idea of it. The idea that you can get like so wrapped up in your own head and your own thoughts that you get you become like lost in this space. But like, I don't know it. It's a, it, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it feels kind of pretentious. It does. <laughs> I mean, like, the movie was going to feel pretentious anyway. It's called Soul. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what do you expect? But, I don't know. It's not fleshed out enough. And yet that's where the plot climax happens because, of course, 22. The third act is really, really weak. Yeah, the third act climax I don't really is... like how the movie ended. No. No. Not just the moral, but like how that whole having to save 22 wrapped up. Yeah. It's like, you're telling me that this one guy ruined her whole life. Well, and like, it or makes... their own life. It makes sense because Joe's been really antagonistic and stuff, but it just like the emotional beats just don't yeah, hit. It work, it's it yeah. Work. Anyway, so, so this was definitely a mixed bag. Mostly fine. I like the like a lot of the visuals, and I'll say it again. Just like when we first saw the original trailers for this movie, I wish we would have just gotten a movie about soul music soul jazz music, take out all the fantastical elements. Obviously, it would have been a completely different film with different morals, probably. Mm -hmm. But I would have loved to just have a movie about humans being humans playing jazz music. Mm -hmm. I also, one last note I want to say, having this movie be about jazz music. One, yes, I love jazz music, but that's like the safest thing oh, to go with. Yeah. And like... I don't have any deep commentary on that. Just that, like, this was all played so safe. Oh, incredibly safe. It's so squeaky clean that it's almost a little insulting, but, like, oh, what can you do? Mm -hmm. okay. I, I like the jazz. I mm -hmm. like the jazz positives. Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say about soul. Yes. Same with you? Yeah. All right. So now we're going to talk about... Why can I not... Wolf Watchers. I can't remember... Walkers. I thought it was Watchers. Sean, they walk in the body of wolves. Yeah, but like they're also watching the wolves because that's what the job is. They're wolf walkers well, because... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, I know, <laughs> I know. Hello, everybody that skipped ahead. Um, oh my god. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's hilarious because today, like an hour before doing this, every single time we mentioned doing this review, Sean's like, we're going to review Soul and... The other one. The other thing. And I'm like, wolf walkers. And he's like, yeah, I knew it. I just, I couldn't. And now we're, and that happened multiple times. And now we're mm-hmm. here. And mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Okay. So 2D animated film from, I can't remember the studio's name. Cartoon Saloon. Cartoon God, Saloon. Sean, you're going to make me cry. From Ireland. <laughs> yes. This is their fourth film? Mm-hmm. They've done Secret of the Kells, Song of the Sea, The Breadwinner, and now Wolfwalkers. And this is a studio that literally is just getting paid by their government to make beautiful artistic films. And by God, I wish it were that way here. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot more into it than that. Well, but yes. like that's that's a very basic reading, like, mm-hmm. gist of it. Like, obviously, that's not all of it. If the movies weren't successful Performing on some well. yeah. account, they would not be able to make more, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I want to say in this non-spoiler section that this movie is so pretty. Oh, my God. I love how everything looks. I love how everything moves. I've not been... This is going to really sound bad, uh-huh. but when I watched their first movie, The Secret of the Kells, I was not impressed. Mm-hmm. I did not like it. I felt like the the Gaelic uh, Irish lore completely bounced off of me. I did not care. The visuals I felt were weird, and the the plot and pacing was bad. Every movie. I will conti- fight you on all of those. Oh yeah, and I and I fight- have, I have, and I might fight a little differently by the time that we get around to watching it again for animation pilgrimage. Mm-hmm. But every single movie after that, mm-hmm. I feel like they have gotten better and better, and I am more accustomed and welcome to it. And this one is a plus 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 plus. This is a amazing movie in my eyes. I literally choked up, and almost cried throughout like this whole movie Mm -hmm. and then did cry like multiple times and like during the climax just because like it's so beautiful the way they animate things it's so good it's so good man the movie obviously has wolves in it it's too good for this world it's too good for this year there's a pack of wolves and whenever the pack of wolves move they're like just flowing water with heads sticking out of it and it doesn't look awkward it's gorgeous <laughs> yes it is oh and as far as the like it's not just pretty visuals either this is like a perfect beautiful story for what it is mm-hmm. like this knows exactly what it wants to be um it won't really ever shock or surprise you at any point like, but, the plot seems pretty straightforward, beat for beat. You mm-hmm. can probably guess what's going to happen. And in a way, it's almost stronger for that, too. Because you can... Ign- you can stop paying attention to the plot so much and just soak in the visuals. Sorry, I cut you off again. <laughs> you can relate to the character so well, because the character animation on them is so well. You always know what the characters are thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, it is so seamless how well the character animation clues you in how the characters are feeling that, like, I almost didn't even think to mention it before I had a chance to, like, really think about it. I'm like, what do I want to talk about with this? Uh, I'm just thinking about, like, the beauty of the aesthetics of everything. But, like, really, the character animation is 
top notch in this film. Oh, yeah. You can tell a character by, like, three seconds of them moving. Mm -hmm. And And you know everything about them. And that's not just for our, our arguably four leads either like all the background characters too like Mm -hmm. as soon as they come on screen like from their character design their expressions you know exactly what they're about Mm -hmm. it's really good uh well watch it yeah absolutely watch it a plus plus movie wins the year Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, we're not doing not... an award show this or for 2020, but because like, it's no contest. It's no contest. This wins. Everything else is fine to okay or bad, and this well was... of what we've seen. Yeah, but like yeah, this and this was immaculate. Zero zero contest. This movie is like a ten out of ten. Um, speaking of Secret of the Kells, mm-hmm. I do want to say that this movie feels like. An improved version of Secret of the Kells that's much more accessible to a wider audience. Yeah. Yes. Because, Who you doesn't know, like werewolves? <laughs> because you can't say wolf walkers. Wolf walker. <laughs> the job of the guy in the movie was a wolf watcher. Hunter. Yeah. He watches for wolves. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh. Um, and yeah, there's some other smart things about this movie I want to point out, but I want to talk about that when we get to spoilers. So, okay, are you ready to go to spoilers? No, I have one last uh, thing to talk about in the non-spoiler section because it just feels like a general thing. Mm-hmm. I felt like some of the Irish accents were thick enough that I could not understand what people were saying. If you have difficulties listening to other people's accents, or if English is not your first language, you might want to watch this with subtitles. Yeah, that's like, that's fair. That, that's, that's a good warning, That's pretty honestly. much all I want to say. It's like, because a lot I of, don't have trouble with that, so yeah, that's a good thing to bring up. Because the movie is set in Ireland... And nearly every character has an incredibly thick Irish accent, which works very well for the movie, but it means that I couldn't understand a couple of the characters. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a farmer guy. I couldn't tell you anything he said. (laughs) That just makes me laugh. (laughs) What? (laughs) I just... Uh It's just a thing where my no, brain doesn't understand it. It's it's a good thing to keep in mind. It, it's something that you have to really... I would have to concentrate on and like mm-hmm. on my first watch. I wasn't paying attention to what people were saying, okay? I was looking at the beautiful, gorgeous visuals. I've been exposed to enough... Um, like enough Irish and Celtic uh, stories and stuff like that that I didn't have a problem with it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just talking okay. about my own experience... Okay. Anyway, spoilers? Yeah, I think we can move on to the spoiler section now. So if you, if don't you haven't seen spoilers, Wolf Walkers yet, please go give it a watch. Please support films like these. Mm-hmm. It's on Apple, Apple TV. TV. Yeah. And you can do like a free thing. Subscription That's for a month. A or free trial for like a trial. week, I think, yeah. or something. Where you can get and watch the movie and then cancel everything if you want. I or hope you can just... it gets a DVD release. Or a Blu-ray release? I would guess it would. I feel like that's something that things are still doing. I don't know. Well, with such a... Because it's such a small, like... Film? Not not necessarily small film, but like a smaller studio. Mm. That the cost for, you know, doing the distribution and marketing and stuff like that to do... A physical release a might physical be release. Too, too much. Yeah, well, it just might be something that they skip. Yeah, who knows? I hope they do, because I would like to own this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, actually own it, not, oh, I rented just for it streaming. or I bought a digital version. I don't like digital versions of things. I prefer physical, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the spoilers. And if you're not going to stick around for the spoilers, I hope you guys enjoyed the reviews. Mm-hmm. And bye... And yeah. now we talk about spoilers. Yeah. The villain is boring and does not matter. But he works very well for what he's supposed to do. Yeah. Well, I mean... Like, he's just a very staunch Christian invader colonizer man. Okay. 
I want to say this right off the bat. This movie is... I, 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 I want to say it right now. This movie is, I think, way smarter than people are going to give it credit for for a while. I think it's going to take a while for people to realize how smart this movie is. Mm-hmm. Um, because it appears really simple on first viewing. Yeah. And like it has a very um fairy tale feel to it. The it, because everything reads so well and things are like kind of predictable, you know, I think a lot of like just how well this movie is paced and like how succinct it is with all the information it gives you is amazing. Like, this is a nearly perfect movie, in my opinion. Um, Wait, did they make Breadwinner? Yeah. Okay. I I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) I don't know. My brain was wandering while you were talking. I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) Pay attention. Um, (laughs) Sorry, go back to what you were saying. (laughs) And I just think that this is such a smart movie to tie its environmental message into the idea of the harm colonialism does to cultures. Mm -hmm. Because this was... Both an environmental film and, like... Anti-colonialism? Yeah. Because, like, the movie is set in Ireland in the 1600s? I don't remember. They had the date on the, like, at the beginning of the movie, but it's when England has recently taken over Ireland and, like, they're trying to enforce their ways. Make them get rid of all their pagan beliefs and yada, 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 yada. Mm-hmm. So, like, obviously the locals hate them. Mm-hmm. And it ties in, um, like, there's just this idea that they're going to the English are going to, like, burn the woods down and they're going to... Get gonna rid of wi- the get, wildness. Yeah, and get rid of the, the wolves and... Um, to, to like, tame the land. And, like, the movie specifically... Like, like, it spells it out for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Like, it specifically uses words like savages and uncivilized and, you know, like, it's Stuff not... Like mm-hmm. it's It's not trying to be cheeky with its message. It's very on the nose. But, like, that's what I like about this film is it just very much shows it for like shows the, um, the bad guys being evil and like, there's no both sides in it. It's just like, no, this is wrong. This is bad. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a really cute story about two girls becoming really good friends. Yeah. And I don't care where it goes from there. Mm Mm-hmm. They're ten, so who cares? So who cares? Uh, yeah. They could grow up to see each other as siblings, or they could see each other as more than siblings. Mm-hmm. I don't care. The movie ended. I think they make a really good two characters that are friends. Yeah. And, yeah, their relationship is so well done. I think this movie does a really good job of capturing what it's like to be a child. hmm And having... Uh, no idea, like, 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 you're still learning how the world works, and there's still, like, these societal pressures, and how, like, scary it is to stand up to adults. Mm -hmm. And even adults who might, like, want the best for you, but... But they've already been cowed by the social norms. By the pressures, yeah, yeah. Because there's... There's a parallel relationship going on with our main characters, Robin and Mabe. Mabe and her mother have been separated because Mabe's mother is a wolf walker and she's been caught by the big bad guy. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they're supposed to be leaving the woods to go find somewhere new to live. Um, But Mabe doesn't want to leave without her mother. And then Robin is with her father, and her father works for the big bad guy hunting wolves. So obviously conflict there and all that. But other than just, like, 
the basic conflict, they do a really good job establishing the relationships between parent and child. Mm -hmm. And just, like, how heartbreaking it is to, if you may, be away from a parent. And sometimes how suffocating it is to, for Robin, to depend on that parent. Mm -hmm. And, like... Oh, it's just very well done. It's, it's a very well done dichotomy. Yeah, it's just... Oh. On a lighter, sillier note, mm -hmm. the rules of this world is you become a wolf walker if a wolf walker bites you. Mm -hmm. How the hell are there only two of them? <laughs> well, because they specifically were trying to keep it that way. Yeah. They mention it. I know, but it's just the thing, like... It, Common practice, if you have to defend yourself as a wolf walker, one of your best aspects is your teeth. Yeah. And biting somebody. Yeah, but they're specifically trying not to, and they're trying to stay away from conflict. I know. It, it, again, it's a really silly thing, but it's like, <laughs> if this is how your werewolf rules work, it seems real easy for that to pass on. I mean, that's how most werewolf rules work. Mm-hmm. It's through a bite. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like... Oh, no, terrible curse. <laughs> Thankfully, they don't really play it off like that. They're just more of a, we don't want more people. Well, because they're not, they're not like, werewolves. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're wolf walkers. Yes. They're people that become wolves when they sleep. Yeah. But their human bodies still also exist. Mm hmm And they can be killed like any other wolf, which is a plot point. Yeah. But um, also healing magic. <laughs> yeah. So They're you, great. I yeah. love them. Yeah, I just, this is a, a beautiful film. And with, um, I, I just love that Cartoon Saloon is telling these stories and they are just sharing their own heritage in such a unique and beautiful way with such like great characters and like, just really blowing all the other competition out of the water, like, in, in especially in terms of this year. But, like, all of their films have been gorgeous mm. and there, wonderful. There are not other big-budget theatrical films mm -hmm. that look like these films. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like you see a Cartoon exist. Saloon film and you go, yes, that is a Cartoon Saloon film. And I just... You know, I, I love... I want more studios to be able to do that. Yeah. And I mean, the, like the, the art style, style is like... not something just specific to, to Cartoon Saloon. It's such a love letter to their own... Heritage. Heritage and history. The... the Like, camera techniques they use, where, where they they stage the, the composition of the screen to be like triptychs. Like, that is... I... They do it in all of their films, and I love it so much. I love triptychs, and the way that they can then combine that with animation mm -hmm. is oh, so good. I guess for anybody who might not know, probably tell from like the word triptych. But triptych is whenever you um, you ha you cut the screen into thirds essentially, and in old art you would like old biblical and Irish art, like you would do triptychs and like they would kind of usually tell a story between the three panels. Mm -hmm. But in Cartoon Saloon, they're able to like do the same thing, but with animation and it's so cool. And they've only gotten better and better at doing it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And of course, like the, the, the circular theme of everything and like things looking like Irish knots and stuff like that. Just, it's so, so good. It's so good. I can't recommend this movie enough. And if you haven't checked out the, the works of Cartoon Saloon in the past, I highly recommend giving them a watch as well, if you mm -hmm. haven't seen them. Yeah, I will let you know Breadwinner is a very serious film. Yeah, Breadwinner's pretty serious. We the did other a review two are of that bit, one as well. Yeah, the other two are a bit more lighthearted, but Breadwinner is... Mm -hmm. oof, yeah. He's heavy, Doc. Yeah. 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 I think I think that's it for talking about both movies. Mm -hmm. um, just here at the end, yeah, I want to say that it's kind of funny 
that both of these movies have some similarities that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Yeah, they do. Like the fact that both of them have the main character turning into an animal in like the second act. Uh huh. For no reason. Oh, well, okay. For no reason in the one case, but like they just both turn into an animal for reasons. And that's kind of amusing. It is. It is. And like. Stunning visuals. Okay, what I do want to say fronts. though is like Wolf Walkers, this is not like body swapping because yes. like they don't swap bodies, but I much prefer this this kind of way of handling this where like it's not implied that Mabe and Robin are like taking over a wolf that is alive they just turn into wolves but yeah. their body is still there yeah they're like ethereal wolves yeah because it's it's more of a transformation as compared to a body swap body swap is specifically swapping bodies with somebody else going into someone else's body yeah, yeah. uh transformation is like someone becomes another thing mm -hmm. but is not that invalidating the privacy of someone else's body or anything exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. And so I much prefer this. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's better. And I I do enjoy this take on it where it is like they become ethereal wolves. They don't even lose their human bodies while they do it. Like mm -hmm. their human bodies are just asleep. I will say at the, the climax of the film, it makes for some fun like swapping, gotcha moments even though like back and forth and stuff yeah, yeah. that was fun yeah that was absolutely fun i, so I gotta ask how the hell does anybody fall asleep that quick <laughs> i know right well or i wake I, up that fast i assume i assume that how it works is that if you're a wolf walker you can just choose to fall asleep so that you can get your wolf body because you're not really like falling asleep anyway you mm -hmm. like close your eyes and you're still awake i guess that's so, true but there's also the rules of you cannot wake up then unless your wolf body returns to the location where your human body is yeah which is also interesting mm -hmm. it's well thought thought out for the for the premise of the film mm -hmm. yeah yeah good movie that's about it. Great, great stuff. Uh, what are we watching next? On if you've seen movie? both of these, let us know how you would compare the two. Yeah. Or just if you watched one or the other, talk about them in the description. And, and Yeah. Like I said, brainstorm those ideas or whatever. Um, Going into 2021. I have you no know, idea what that means for what we're watching. Yeah. I So many things have been delayed. Like, I feel... Honestly, after Scoob, I fell so out of the loop of, like, what's, what's actually coming out? coming out or not. Like, I know Sony's Connected got pushed back and, like, oh, and yeah. there's there's just, there's so many movies that got pushed back. There's um, other movies that were scheduled for this year that we're, we've just heard nothing from. I, I have no idea. And right, Raya. Raya. Raya's coming out. That's one I know about that's coming and the out. the Hidden Dragon, the Dragon Queen. Dra Raya and the, the Hidden missing, Dragon, I think. Missing Dragon. Something about dragons. Yeah. From Disney. Mm-hmm. Yep, Didn't that's like from Disney. Didn't like the look of their trailer. Disney has bad trailers. Yeah, so, so I'm always willing to give them... A, it's like, I'm not a, going to... An inch when yeah, it comes I'm not, to the I'm trailers. I'm not going to say I'm not in looking forward to or not the film. It's just... Like, the trailer was bad. Mm -hmm. It was a bad trailer. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Yeah. So, will we do more current movie reviews? Uh, like we said at the beginning, if we watch something and we feel like we have something to say about it, we will. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, anticlimactic end. Go watch Wolf Walkers. Yeah. Anyway, have a good 2021, everyone. Yeah, goodbye.